At this time, we'll turn to the Board of Higher Education and Ministry. Good afternoon, delegates and guests. I'm pleased to stand before you representing the General Board of Higher Education and Ministry. I know you've heard this urgency, but I can think of no time in my professional life as a United Methodist as critical as now for our future. Truly, we stand at a crossroads where what we decide here at this general conference will forge the difference between growth and decline for our denomination. I'm convinced that it will be leadership that will make the difference as we define our future as United Methodists. In particular, theological formation, ministry with students and younger people, and higher education. Please welcome three dynamic young leaders of ours, Nikki Gonzalez Moreno, Wesley Theological student from the Southwest Texas Annual Conference, Taylor Johnson, a Wesley Foundation student at South Dakota State, and Isaac Broom, communicator and translator for the Quarte d'Ivoire Annual Conference. They are here to help us celebrate our great leadership connection. Bonjour. We are happy to be here to talk about the vast network of United Methodist schools, college, and university around the world. This distinctive and expansive network has 120 schools, college, and university in the United States. And that includes 13 United Methodist seminaries, 520 campus ministries, and 800 institutions around the world. Throughout history, our network has embodied our core values of equality, justice, and access for all. It includes schools that were the first to award degrees to women and freed slaves. In fact, the Methodist Church established the Freedmen's Aid Society. We were the first to establish missional schools. We were the first to provide resources to ensure that anyone who wants to pursue a higher education has and will have an opportunity to do so. This is our legacy. We see the fruits of this network within the church and far beyond. Many of us stand on the shoulders of accomplished alumni who were historic transformative leaders in the world, such as Catherine Elizabeth Elizabeth Benson, the first woman to earn a college bachelor's degree. She was a part of the class of 1840 at Wesleyan College in Macon, Georgia. Judge Horace T. Ward, the first black student to legally challenge segregation in higher education in the segregated deep south of the United States. He was a graduate of Clark Atlanta University. And the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the great civil rights leader, was a PhD graduate of Boston University School of Theology. We take those leaders as well as those making a difference today. We have many students and alumni making history in their own right, and they are everywhere. Rodrigo Godinez was the first person to enter the other ministry in the Methodist Theological Seminar of Costa Rica. He graduated with honors in 1999. He currently serves as the pastor and district superintendent in Costa Rica. Students Rola Alcatel and Casey Magnuson of Hamlin University in Minnesota are leading community service programs and ecumenical dialogue as part of the as President Obama's Interfaith and Community Service Campus Challenge. Adrian College students Jamie Hollingshead and Emila Zaishewicz are living out their school's longtime mission. The institution was founded in 1859 as an abolitionist college. Today, the women are focusing their efforts to fight against contemporary slavery and human trafficking. Shannon Sedgwick Davis is a graduate and participant in McMurray University's Servant Leadership Program based in Abilene, Texas. She works across Africa with world leaders such as Nelson Mandela and Desmond Tutu in the area of human rights. 
You know, I pray for a world, a world where we stop sitting in apathy and ignorance, and rather that we sit in hope and determination for a better world. And in sitting in that hope and determination, I think there we can find magic, and there we can find a way to contribute ourselves to making that world a better place. And that is my great, great hope. Newly named Brigadier General Burdette Thompson is also making a difference as the Deputy Director of Operations in the National Military Command Center in the Pentagon. He is a graduate of Ferrum College. Nebraska Wesleyan student Angelo Stabler, member of the Homa tribe, started his own youth group for at-risk middle school students through a partnership with First United Methodist Church in Lincoln. The program is in his third years helping teens appreciate education and their culture. Our network reaches well beyond the United States to Brazil, Japan, and across Africa. Dr. Beauty Mayantaniza is a living testimony to the value of the United Methodist Education Connection. I would like to appreciate the United Methodist Church because for me as an indigenous African, I would not have managed to get all the way to get my PhD. It was the sponsorship from the United Methodist Church. That alone for me is something which I always cherish. And that's one of the things which has pushed me to say now let me go and give my service also to the church through my being at Africa University. I want to say thank you to the United Methodist Church. I love you all. We know that we are in a room full of transformative leaders right here in Tampa. We want to recognize some of you. Please hold your applause until the end. Please stand and remain standing if you have attended Africa University. Please stand and remain standing if you have attended a United Methodist educational institution in the Central Conferences or an institution in the Methodist tradition outside the United States. Please stand and remain standing if you have attended a United Methodist related educational institution in the United States. Please stand and remain standing if you have participated in a United Methodist campus ministry. Please stand and remain standing if a former student of a United Methodist college, university, or seminary has had an impact on your life, such as a family member, pastor, lay leader, youth director, lawyer, teacher, or doctor. Look around this room. You can see the breadth and impact of our educational connection. Let's give them all a round of applause. Please be seated. We hope to be like all of you one day to stand beside you as alumni from one of our great United Methodist related institutions, leading and transforming the entire world. Now, we would like to welcome to the stage one of the youngest college presidents in the nation, Dr. Walter Kimbrough. He is the president of Philander Smith College in Ar Little Rock, Arkansas, and president-elect of Dillard University in New Orleans. He has provided leadership at all levels of the United Methodist Church, Please help me welcome Dr. Walter Kimbrough. Good afternoon. I am honored to be here representing Philander Smith College and the Higher Education Connection. This connection is important because it helps education leaders like myself and others in 800 institutions from 80 countries to sharpen our vision of creating principled Christian leaders and to strengthen our connection to the United Methodist Church. We have a lot to celebrate as a denomination. This year, Africa University celebrates 20 years as the first 
private international university in Zimbabwe. African university graduates are returning to their communities and establishing new churches and working to address major issues such as food security, public health, peace, and economic development. Because we believe that education is the answer to global challenges, our connection is also supporting initiatives through the Methodist Global Education Fund for Leadership Development. This fund allows us to work with partners in Africa, Asia and the Pacific, Europe, Latin America, and North America to provide leadership training. In the United States, through generous gifts to the Ethnic and Service Training Grant, congregations are able to recruit and train ethnic United Methodist persons in leadership positions and transform communities. Grants funded after school and summer programs, as well as ethnic empowerment and specific language programs for Hispanic and Korean communities. I personally see the impact of your support of higher education every day. The United Methodist Church has helped to fund 11 historically black colleges and universities known as HBCUs through the Black College Fund. This fund has enabled 17,000 students this year alone to seek higher education. We are proud that the United Methodist Church supports the largest number of accredited historically black colleges and universities in the United States. I can't emphasize enough how life-changing your support to this fund is. 70% of black college fund students receive the federal Pell Grant, meaning they come from families that earn less than $40,000 a year. This is double the national average for college students. But allow me to personalize this even further. The average family income for my students is $29,000 a year. The national average is more than $49,000. My students come from families that earn $20,000 a year less than the national average and just $7,000 a year above the poverty threshold for a family of four. My students, like all United Methodist HBCU students, simply desire to better themselves and their families, but they need our help. Scholar Irv Bredlinger, in his book about social justice through the eyes of John Wesley, writes that Wesley had no tolerance for the kind of Christianity that was egocentrically preoccupied with one's own spiritual state and therefore blind to the needs of humans nearby. People need education. Your support, both abroad and right here, is important because your help fundamentally changes lives and changes futures for the better. Thank you, Dr. Kimbrough. Higher education is in the United Methodist DNA. The Division of Higher Education of the General Board of Higher Education and Ministry provides the structure that holds together the largest connection of non-Roman Catholic higher education institutions in the United States. The total student enrollment in our institutions in the United States alone exceeds the enrollment in the University of California system, the largest higher education system in this country. Through this connection, we are able to reach thousands of people, thousands of young people in their most formative years. We see this lived out in United Methodist colleges and university campuses, in seminaries, and in campus ministries. For example, Perk Campus Wesley and Mississippi Gulf Community College decided to rethink campus ministry in its sense of mission and reached out to curb alcohol-related deaths 
and DUIs on and around campus. The campus ministry group there decided to transform their facility, known as the barn, into an alcohol-free club. So on Thursday nights, with Jesus-centered hospitality and student-centered fun, the barn offers a safe haven for college students with karaoke, dancing, and fellowship. Campus and collegiate ministries like our schools, colleges, and universities are a primary source of clergy recruitment. Through campus ministries, we are able to raise up new generations of thoughtful, articulate Christians who care about making the world a better place as disciples of Jesus Christ. We see this commitment also in campus chaplaincy programs across the country. At Willamette University in Salem, Oregon, the chaplain's office helps facilitate a university-wide program that is dedicated to helping students engage the larger questions of meaning and purpose to discern their calling in life and how their faith impacts their vocation. We see this commitment on the campuses of the 13 theology schools that comprise the Association of United Methodist Theological Schools. Since the 2008 General Conference, these schools have graduated 979 women and men for ordination within the United Methodist Church. We expect that number to double by General Conference 2016. The university and college connection is the strongest mechanism we have in our denomination to build up and sustain church membership. Our ministry in higher education reaches young people, and we reach young people during those formative years when values, commitments, and vocation are solidified. Rather than disconnecting from the church during college, our students have opportunities to explore their faith instead. And now it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Jennifer Broughton, the first female chief executive of Ferrum College in Virginia. She has helped to transform that small college into a growing community with a 78% increase in enrollment since her arrival in 2002. Please welcome Dr. Jennifer Broughton. In a world of profound challenges and change, we need the connection between the church and our schools, colleges, and universities now more than ever. It is this connection that reminds us of the greater vision to be faithful witnesses to the gospel of Jesus Christ for the sake of the world. The General Board of Higher Education and Ministry provides the structure that supports this connection, and for that we are deeply grateful. John Wesley's vision of living out the gospel through institutions of higher education fuels the passion, the power, and the purpose of hundreds of institutions and thousands of worthy students around our world. GBHEM ensures the nurturing and strengthening of this vital witness in the world today. Together we connect campus and community and build up principled Christian leaders. Believe me, leaders of private educational institu institutions understand budget constraints because we live with them every day. But let me be clear, our educational connection is worthy of this investment. The church needs to make this investment for our future. As Raleigh Martinson, a Lutheran theologian, once said, the question is not, will our children have faith, but will our faith have children? Indeed, as the great preacher Ernest Campbell said, to be mature is to build schools in which you will not study, to be mature is to plant trees under which you will not sit, to be mature is to make a church from which you will not benefit, but that is precisely what we do in church-related higher education. We build for the long term, 
we build and mold leaders for the future whose contributions we might not see but we believe will happen. When we are distracted by short-term solutions to financial problems, should we not instead be thinking about the long-term impact of all of our decisions today? Our founders, our forefathers, our foremothers believed the world was their parish, and they went into all corners of all frontiers under arduous circumstances and at great personal cost and sacrifice. Like them, should we not be talking about how we can do more rather than less? If you need proof of the strength and benefits of our educational system, just look at our graduates. Look at yourselves. You've come from all backgrounds. They come from all backgrounds, all circumstances, and all races. They receive scholarships from thousands of loyal United Methodists like yourselves. They have received the best education in the world, and they have become our pastors, our teachers, our missionaries, our doctors, and so much more. They go into the world living out the gospel of Jesus Christ by practicing justice, mercy, love, and compassion. How can we ask for anything less? Let us continue to do everything more. Thank you very much. And yes, we have so much more to share with you about the importance of our United Methodist Education Connection. As the President of the Board of Directors for the General Board of Higher Education and Ministry, I invite you tonight to our Higher Education Night with Fellowship, immediately following this presentation. We will go to ballrooms B, C, and D downstairs. Please come and enjoy with us pizzas and sliders, meeting our students and the presidents as we engage in conversation. They have traveled far to be with us. Tell them about your experiences and learn about the fantastic things leaders across our United Methodist Connection are doing to transform the world. And so what we want you to do is as we are led out by our own Africa University Choir, we are inviting all of you to join us as we go downstairs to have conversation together. Won't you do that with us this afternoon? We say congratulations. We say congratulations.
Sing in the light. 